have you gotten a little sick and tired of running into 3D printing issues and failed prints and a stack of things that just aren't going right? Or maybe you're looking to level up your game, whether you're a beginner, mid-level, pro, whatever it is when it comes to 3D printing. Well, today I'm gonna share my top five resources that have helped me over the last eight years as I've been developing my workflow with 3D printing, and I wanna share that information with you today. Let's dive right into it. All right, I did wanna say that everything I'll be talking through today will be linked in the description below. So navigate there for any websites or resources that I'll be bringing up just to get a direct jump to certain things that are really, really important. Coming in at number one is going to be educational content and tutorials. So for me, uh, this tends to be anytime I'm wanting to figure out a problem, do some troubleshooting. I feel like my number one go-to is to go straight to YouTube and search the problem myself or go to a lot of the channels that I've already subscribed to to get some information directly from resources that I feel like have always been trustworthy. There's a few that stick out in my mind as being my favorite, but I did wanna just give a full list of the ones I've frequented the most over the last, I don't know, five to 10 years and let you pick through those to see which ones are gonna make the biggest impact for maybe your curiosity or just general help and kind of go from there. But I will say the number one place to jump to is always going to be YouTube for me, just so I can type in whatever it is, the problem that I'm having, or maybe I'm just looking at buying a certain filament or part and I'd like to see some reviews. Definitely go there first and check it out. Coming in at number two, we're gonna have 3D model repositories. What is a 3D model repository? So these tend to be websites where a lot of creators that do CAD design in Blender, Fusion, whatever, they come up with the design and they wanna post it to the internet to either be downloaded for free or be a paid model that you can purchase to do um, your own 3D printing of that model. So some of my favorites are printables.com. This was started by Josef Prusa and the Prusa community. It tends to still be one of the best ones for finding just models of random things that kind of pop into my head. Or if someone is looking for something, that's the one that I tend to send to others to start their uh, STL file search. And then some other ones that have always been trustworthy are Thingiverse, Colts 3D, especially Colts 3D when it comes to purchasing files and a whole slew of others out there as well that I don't have a ton of experience with as much as those three, but I'll have some more links to those as well. All right, coming in at number three, I would encourage you to look at online communities and forums. One of the best websites that I've found in my experience has been all3dp.com. I know there's been some controversy in the past about some of the postings that they've made, for example, stealing images from other creators without giving the right attributions to them, etc. Uh, I think that largely has been resolved. Please comment below if that's still an ongoing issue or if there's something I'm just not aware of with the website. But I will say overall, they tend to do a really good job of buying guides where they dive into research for resin 3D printers, FDM, scanners, you name it, anything related to 3D printing. But I've also found some really good step-by-step -step tutorials for troubleshooting guides or installations. Again, kind of an all-around resource that's a nice, uh, website for anything you might want to be able to search on certain topics related to 3D printing. Another one, this is kind of niche, but when I first got started out with my Ender, I was having a lot of issues with certain weird artifacts happening with a lot of my 3D prints. So whether it was just bed adhesion or uh, over extrusion, under extrusion, stringing. I kept searching kind of at random throughout the internet to find like a nice guide that could give you a picture of what issue you're having and then sort of dive into a list of things you could try to fix it. And Simplify 3D has put together a really nice guide that does exactly that. So I'll have that linked and I'll also have a link from Simplify 3D for just a general material buying guide or using guide. It goes in all of the popular different FDM 3D printing materials that you can use nowadays and kind of tells you what they're good for, what they're bad for. And uh, again, it's all just crammed into a nice website, a web page where you can navigate it on your own and choose your own destiny there. And then the last one I want to point to is Reddit. There is an r slash 3D printing wiki that 
really could summarize this entire video, to be honest with you. It has everything you need from picking the right 3D printer, what kind of 3D printing you wanna do, where to find models, where to do modeling, even the modeling repositories that I mentioned. This site really can start you in the right direction for any of that stuff as an absolute beginner. So definitely check that one out. It has been super helpful for me in the past as kind of a start over, go back to square zero and work my way up with finding information and getting pointed to a lot of other good resources. Okay, number four is going to be hardware and material suppliers. So this is a mix of both in-person and online platforms that I tend to frequent the most. I usually order stuff online. That's kind of my go-to method. And if we're speaking generally about just filaments or printer upgrades or whatever, I'll be honest with you, my go-to is amazon.com. I tend to find aftermarket parts. That's where I've always bought some of my favorite filaments that I go with. And you can even buy full-on 3D printers from there as well. So I will say Amazon typically does a really good job at having good stuff available. Mind you, I live in Colorado. I'm pretty close to a distribution center, so I've never had an issue with shipping or anything like that. But I will say, definitely check them out for anything that you're trying to purchase. They usually have a very good selection of that stuff. But if you're the kind of person that likes to be in store for something, if you haven't heard of this place yet, it's called Micro Center. Micro Center is fantastic. It's got everything for all of your gaming and PC needs specifically. But the thing that drew me to it was their maker section where you can buy Raspberry Pis and soldering equipment and anything you'd need for just doing your own building DIY stuff. And when I went there to look for a Raspberry Pi, I discovered that they have a 3D printer section. I was just there a week ago and they are selling all of the bamboos, they are selling all the Crealities, they are selling Sovols, a whole selection in person of 3D printers that I think are kind of the, the top of the market right now. So if you wanna just go in and see some printers actually running prints, Micro Center is an incredible place to go just to get hands-on, eyes on the 3D printer you may be thinking of, there's a very good chance they have it in store, probably running a 3D print, which I found huge, especially when it comes to either buying something or just wanting to know speeds or just random stuff. It's always helpful to just get hands on and I'm not affiliated with them. They're not, they don't know anything about this video. I just feel like they're a great resource for 3D printing and kind of getting hands on with it. Lastly, I wanted to say that typically any of the major brands that you can buy 3D printers from usually have a very good storefront as well. So for me, one that I go to now a lot is the Bamboo Lab website. So I tend to buy a lot of their PLA just because the compatibility is fantastic with their platform. And they also put RFID tags on their spools for the AMS so that it automatically reads in the material settings, which I think is amazing. However, in the past, when I bought my Prusa, I also ordered filament from them. Prusa's website is also really great for pointing you to online community forums, tutorials, educational content, and and then accessories and other things you'll need for your printers as well. Definitely check out, you know, main name brand suppliers and just see what they potentially have. If not, I'm also gonna throw in a couple of other places that I've found to be pretty useful as well. So places like Matter Hackers or Big Tree Tech or other random ones, I'll throw those in the description as well with some links just to kind of view at your own pleasure. All right, coming in at number five, I have my go-to software resources as well. So this starts off with CAD, which is an uh, acronym for for computer-aided design. When you initially get into 3D printing, this tends to be a pretty immediate topic to dive into, which is, do I wanna design something on my own or just wanna download a file from one of the 3D model repositories and just let that be my workflow? There are a lot of different resources out there that you can choose from, some free, some paid, some good, some bad, and I'm going to speak to the ones that have resonated the best with me. A little backtrack here, when I started out with getting into modeling, the very first CAD platform that I used was Tinkercad and today I still think that is a great resource for beginners. Just go to tinkercad.com, sign up with an account through Autodesk and you can get modeling within five or 10 minutes. What I like the most about it is A, that it's free, but B, that it's really easy to grasp, especially if you've never done any CAD modeling. For me, I found easy tutorials on how to do my first model, both on Tinkercad's website and on YouTube. But more importantly, I was able to do some pretty rigorous designs like my th fully 3D 
printed rover that I did for a space grant competition. Highly, highly, highly recommend if you haven't done any CAD modeling whatsoever, try out tinkercad.com, sign up for an account, spend a couple days just playing around with it, making some models and see what you think. Now, moving on to more rigorous modeling platforms, I will say I did start out with SolidWorks back when I was in college. I had an educational license, so I didn't have to pay for it. So I really enjoyed it. I got a lot of time using it there and was able to just generate STLs and start 3D printing that way after I graduated, I guess, from Tinkercad. But that all came to an end when I graduated and I didn't want to pay for the license, which they do have a hobbyist license nowadays. I will try to find a link and put that in the description as well just to cross compare if you are looking at one of the other packages. But for me at the time, the crossroads led me to looking at Fusion 360, which they do have a free hobbyist license to use. And personally, if you end up going the route of starting with Tinkercad and getting into Autodesk kind of user environment, or if you just want something that's really easy that has a ton of community support, I would highly recommend Fusion 360. I think it's very easy to learn. And in terms of getting learning content, my one of my all time favorite creators on YouTube, which is Lars Christensen has some beginner tutorials that are fantastic walking you through making an initial part and then getting into more advanced feature development. So that would be my recommendation nowadays is if anyone comes to me and asks, you know, what's a nice free CAD platform that you've had good luck with? I always say Fusion 360 just because I'm at this point now where I've used it a lot and I started from ground zero and kind of worked my way up. And even professionally now, I do use Creo at work. I've used SolidWorks before and still I just feel like for how minimal and and effective the workflow can be in Fusion 360, I still recommend it today. One other thing that I wanna attach to understanding CAD and modeling and stuff like that is no matter which platform you pick, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve, especially when it comes to designing for added manufacturing. So one more link that I do wanna throw in here that's kind of random is from a subreddit for 3D printing, kind of walks you through the model development process. I found it while I was putting together a lot of the resources for this research, and I thought it was really, really, nice, clean, compact way to sort of dive into modeling if I was an absolute beginner. So I'm throwing that in the description as well. Another one that people are going to talk to you about a lot if you're in the market for figuring out different software platforms that go with 3D printing, it's going to be slicing software. So there are two schools of thought here. One is if you buy a 3D printer, nowadays it typically has its own 3D printing slicing software that will come with it. And for this, I'm talking about, I know for sure Prusa does, and I know for sure Bam Bamboo does. And for me personally, I feel like buy one of those printers, you might as well just try out those slicing uh, software platforms just to see if you like it or not. That's one route to go is if you buy a printer, just stick with what they recommend. If you want my own personal recommendation for things that have worked in the past, I started with Kira. I thought it was good enough, especially if you're using just like an i3 bed slinger platform or something very simple. I upgraded to Prusa Slicer, loved it. And now I'm using Bamboo Studio Slicer. Also love it. I think they're great. I would recommend to not overthink this part, find something compatible with your 3D printer. Those are some that I recommend, but again, it's okay to do a little bit of homework here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say there's any hard and fast rule on this one. All right, friends, that's the end of the video for today. Again, these are the top five resources that I feel like have made a huge huge impact to my workflow. If I could ask one thing, I would ask comment below if there's something that I just didn't include. Maybe there's something I included that's just not as helpful as I may think it is, or if there's something better, or maybe something weird has happened with it that I'm just a little outdated on. Please put that below so that other people can upvote it and ask more questions and kind of interact. Because again, the whole emphasis of this video is to try and get someone started with some extra resources they may not be aware of. And anything you can contribute for free would be super helpful to somebody else that's been in the same shoes we've all been in, which is just trying to learn how to use these machines and get comfortable being creators, being engineers, being whatever you are using these. Thank you so much and stay tuned for whatever videos I have coming up next for things related to 3D printing or just general stuff I find interesting. Thanks everyone. Till next time.